welcome to today's lecture which is like which is lesson number 26 of the course on industrial automation and control. Today we are going to take our first look at hydraulic control systems and we will review some elementary basic concepts and then we will first look at the components which make a hydraulic control systems. In the subsequent lectures we shall see some special components and we shall see as to how these components can be used to make a hydraulic control system. So we, so we begin here, before we begin we look at the instructional objectives. So the instructional objectives are basically to describe the principle of principles of operation of hydraulic systems and understand its advantages, what is involved and why it is uh, almost irreplaceably used in certain applications, there are certain advantages. Then uh, of course we have to be, the main purpose of the lesson is to be familiar with the basic hydraulic system components and their roles in the system, what they do. And Describe the constructional and functional aspects of hydraulic pumps and motors, how they function and be familiar with directional valves and control valves. They are very important components. So we will take a somewhat detailed look at these. So we begin with the fundamental principle of hydraulics which is based on essentially on Pascal's law which says that pressure applied to a fluid is transmitted equally in all directions. So if we apply pressure in a fluid at a given point then it the, that same pressure is transmitted through the fluid which is supposed to be incompressible and gets applied everywhere else. So, so, we actually use this property of incompressible fluids to transmit forces. So, we will apply basically hydraulic control systems are used to create motions under uh, in various situations, very precise motions uh, against heavy loads. So, high force has to be transmitted and precise displacements and velocities have to be created. That is the basic area where hydraulic systems find majority of its applications. So what we essentially are going to do is that we are going to apply pressure to a fluid at one end and the same pressure is going to get transmitted and act on some other body. So when pressure acts on, on a body it creates force. So we expect that that force will create a motion, right. Now as I said that pressure determines force and, 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 and how does it determine force? Pressure is given as force per, un, per, force per unit area of the application of the pressure. So you see interestingly we should look at this, we have also learned this in school that if we so you see that if we apply, let's let, let's take this very elementary example which we have, which is the basic uh, principle of a hydraulic press, which was one of the first hydraulic machines which was. So if we have a small piston here, and if we have a large piston here, large means the area is large as you can see, and if we place a load so this is let us say 1 kg then the pressure here is basically this 1 kg force by a1 now the same this is a1 and this is a2 so by Pascal's law now this same pressure is going to get transmitted and will act on this area. So the pressure on this is also 1 kgf by a1 and the force on this 
is 1 kgf into a2 by a1 because this is the pressure. So, what is the force it creates on this body into a2? So, you see that we apply a 1 kg force here and we have created a force which is multiplied. So, we have created a force which can now if that a2 by a1 ratio is 100, then by applying a 1 kg a force at one end, we have created a 100 kg a force at the other at the other end. So, the, so using this principle, it, it, it is somewhat like a fluidic lever. Remember levers that we because of the fulcrum, if we apply a small force at one end, we can lift a much higher load at another end because of moment balance. So, here also because of pressure balance, the same thing is going to happen. So, so we have we can we can multiply, we can create very large forces, and that sometimes it might create an illusion in one's mind that whether how suddenly without I mean does it uh, invalidate any any law of physics is energy conserved energy is indeed conserved because energy or power is force into velocity right. So, we can look at this. So, and that velocity comes from flow right. So, what is the flow? The flow is what is the flow rate because uh, let us look at the next diagram then this picture will be clear. So, let us look at a simple hydraulic actuator. So, you see that we are creating a pressure here. So, that creates a force F depending on the area and the pressure. So, F is equal to P into A. Now, let us look at the velocity. What is the velocity? How what is the what is the volumetric flow rate Q? That is equal to the area into L, where L is the travel per unit time. In other words, L is the velocity. So, F is equal to P into A and Q is equal to L into A. Or in other words, we can write that V is equal to Q by A. So, you see that what is what is the what is what is the mechanical power which is developed that will be force into velocity. So, F into V is equal to P into Q. So, you see that the area does not come into the picture. So, the power in the power equation the area does not come into the picture and even if we try multiply the force the energy does not get multiplied. How can it get multiplied? So, energy is the same for a pump as we know a pump delivers a fluid at a certain rate volumetric flow rate and at a certain pressure and the pump output power is simply P into Q. So, whatever the area the mechanical power is also P into Q F into V is equal to P into Q. So, therefore, energy is conserved and, and there is no contradiction. So, this, but nevertheless so actually what is going to happen is that we will depending on what flow rate we can provide the load perhaps a very high force we can create a very high force, but at the same time the rate at which that load which requires a very high force to move we, is going to be slow. So, the energy is going to be conserved that is the basic fact. Then so the having understood this let us first look at the let us first for, for the uh, better part of this course we will we are going to uh, of this uh, lesson we are going to look at the components. So, let us start looking at the components. So, the most first component that comes to mind is the fluid. So, the fluid itself transmits the prop the power or the pressure. So, you create you create a you input the power and that power will in a way that that power travels through the fluid which is incompressible and delivers the power in a different form. So, the fluid power in terms of pressure and flow gets converted to mechanical power. Now, these uh, there are certain things to be remembered that these are these systems are of very precise create very precise motion and therefore, requires parts of very precise sizes which move within one another. So, there is an amount of friction involved 
because otherwise the fluid is going to leak out right unless the parts are time tightly fitting then the fluid is going to leak out all over the place. So, therefore, there is an amount of friction which is likely and that is going to create lot of problems it is going to create heat it is going to waste energy and it is going to damage the parts. So, it is a prime importance to to lubricate the uh, parts so that smooth frictionless motion takes place and the fluid itself one of the big advantages of hydraulics is that it does not require any additional lubrication which is often required in electric systems and in pneumatic systems because they do not have an inbuilt lubricant. Here we have an inbuilt lubricant which is the fluid itself which is used for power transmission. Even then th some amount of heat is generated because of friction and this heat and so there is a need to cool the, the components because enormous pressure exists and the fluid also cools the components and secondly it also removes the contaminants you know as things move some small small particles may be generated by friction. Similarly, small small similarly sometimes air may come into the fluid. So, all these entrapped air dust particles these things have to be removed from the system and the fluid as it flows it also cleanses these and brings it to the filter where they are filtered. A typical hydraulic fluid, fluid is actually petroleum oil in some cases one uses you know things like water with some with some additives or sometimes water oil mixtures. But, but the most popular uh, hydraulic fluid is petroleum oil which is uh, which is very incompressible it has a self lubricating property the only problem it has it has the is, is that it tends to be somewhat hazardous for fire right. So, that is a drawback. So, it is incompressible lubricating and but combustible combustible means the flash point must be considered. Now, what does the so this is a picture which says what the what the hydraulic fluid does. So, you see that the hydraulic fluid apart from the fact that it lubricates it cools and removes contamination there is there is there is one point that I did not mention that is it seals also. So, because of the viscosity of the oil if you have if you if you for example, the fluid here and the fluid here are going to be effectively sealed by this liquid film. So, this liquid film here is going to act as a seal. So, that this pressure and this pressure do not uh, I mean there is an there is an effective barrier created because if this pressures leak out then the pressure cannot do effective work. So, it will be lost. So, therefore, you need to have seals and in many cases the liquid film itself creates the seal in in still other places you have to add additional seals. So, that is another thing that the liquid does. Now, how does the liquid flow? The liquid actually flows in pipes. Now, this is you know one of the this is a kind of drawback for the hydraulic system in the sense that you have to have an you have to have some piping and you not only have to have piping from the pump to the load as the liquid is flowing because it is a liquid. So, you need to also have the return line. So, that adds some cost and some some maintenance for example, in, contra in con I mean by contrast in pneumatic systems you do not need those uh, you do not need those you do not need the return line because you can release the air into the after it has done the work and it has come to atmospheric pressure you can just release the air into the atmosphere but thereby saving the cost of a return line, but that is not the case for hydraulics you have to have a return line. So, there are various kinds of lines which are used in a hydraulic system for example, the, uh, the, the this is this is supposed to be a pump and this is supposed to be a motor. So, the pump is creating pressure which is moving the motor and creating the motion. So, you see that there are some lines which are shown as farm lines through which the actual liquid flows and transmit the power they are called working lines. Then sometimes there are you, 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 you have to create some additional pressures at various points. So, they that is for that is for control that is not for transmitting the power, but for controlling the direction sometimes releasing pressure. So, you need 
to create pressure at different points. So, you sometimes you, you have to use separate lines and these lines are called pilot lines. In this case, in this particular diagram, the pilot line has been derived from the working line that may or may not be the case all the time. And the pilot line is shown like you know in uh, long dashes. Similarly, you have to have some drain lines because some liquid is, is going to get uh, is, is going to leak out. So, you need to collect them so that they you know they are they, they do not uh, spill here and there they are not lost etcetera. So, so, so you need to add some drain lines. So, so you also have drain lines which are shown in short dashes. So, these are the typically these are these are the three kinds of lines through which fluid flows in a hydraulic system. Then you need some as I said that you need seals and fittings. Sometimes the seal is a natural seal provided by the liquid film, but sometimes you need to fittings means when you have you have pipe you have seen in your in your own house in the in the bathrooms that whenever uh, you I mean some fluid is flowing you need various kinds of fittings you need various kinds of joints right you need the pipe itself which can be a, which can be a farm pipe typically in the in the in the bathrooms it is sometimes a metal you know fixed pipe sometimes you, we have we now have uh, polymer pipes so you here also you can have flexible tubings sometimes you can have hoses which are you know metal reinforced uh, polymer pipes so various kinds of pipes can be used and along with that various kinds of fittings and seals must be used. So, this is we are not going to dwell much on that only just to show just to show what kind of a ring. For example, if you have this is an o ring which is a common very common type of seal. So, you see that as this is moving uh, as this is this is the this is when it is moving against pressure this is a cylinder. So, what happens is that this seal is going to be pressurized and it will come and settle here right. So, when it, it is it is actually pressed. So, when it will come and settle here it will effectively settle it will effectively seal this part from this part from this part. So, this ring this is a rubber tube. So, it will come and under pressure it will come and it is a self sealing uh, under pressure it will provide a seal. So, such seals are various kinds of seals are used it is very important it may not be uh, we may not be dwelling with it, but, but unless these things are properly done your your hydraulic system is is not going to work and it will be a lot of problem for the maintenance. So, from the maintenance point of view these things are very important. Then we need a re, we, we, have, we have a reservoir you know oil is continuously circulating. So, it is starting from a reservoir the pump is sucking the oil and then delivering it at a pressure and then it is flowing through the system and then it is coming back to the reservoir right. So, but apart from the fact that the reservoir holds the fluid it actually does many other things. So, we will So, it holds the fluid obviously, but it does two other things for example, it dissipates heat in the reservoir the liquid gets cooled and it allows entrained air to escape. So, this removal of contaminants is done partly in the filter which is also connected closed on, on, on the pipeline close to the either on the return line generally on the return line uh, and uh, so that removes small particles from the fluid. And in the in the reservoir, the entrained air part air bubbles get removed. And ent removing entrained air bubbles is actually very important because if you have, you can Im well imagine that if you have a fluid and in which if you have uh, entrained air bubbles, then the fluid does not remain incompressible anymore because if you apply pressure to the fluid, it is the air bubbles which will get compressed, and so therefore the fluid itself will get compressed. So, in technical terms the, the bulk modulus of the fluid will can fall drastically if you have entrained air in it. So, it is very important for as we said that for effective transmission and fast quick responding transmission that the fluid is incompressible. So, therefore, it is important that air bubbles have to be removed and they get removed and the tank. So, this is the when we will when we will draw hydraulic circuits we are showing symbols side by side because 
in the coming lessons we will draw hydraulic circuits so that we understand. So, this is a this is a reservoir symbol in which we have two filters. So, coming back, so you see that the functions of the reservoir are shown. So, from hydraulic system there is something called a baffle. So, this is created so that directly otherwise if this is not created the this part of the fluid because of this low resistance directly fluid from this will get sucked into the pump. So, therefore, these fluids will not get sucked and the these fluids will not spend time in the tank. So, therefore, they, they, they will not get cooled, they, their airs will not get removed. So, therefore, a buffle is placed so that the so the fluid which comes settles around this point and the and the fluid which has come earlier actually go and enter the pump. So, this is just to create that. So, this just shows that how the pump is how the reservoir uh, does its job. Now, we come to the main comp component. So, first is the pump as we have seen that the, that the pump is the generator of the hydraulic energy that is it delivers fluid at a flow rate which is determined by the load and at a given pressure. Now, who drives the pump? The pump cannot generate energy by itself. So, the pump has to be generated again by some other means sometimes it is an electric motor which will drive a hydraulic pump. Sometimes especially you know hydraulics is used very much in aerospace applications sometimes you can couple the engine along with the I mean maybe bleed some gas engine gas and then run uh, a special type of motor which will move the pump. So, so, the, so, in other words the pump needs a prime mover and creates and delivers fluid at a given pressure. The motor on the other hand is the counterpart of the pump the motor receives the fluid under pressure and creates motion against the load. So, we generally so the so the pump is like a battery while the motor is like the load and these are the symbols. So, you see that the pump symbol is like this and the motor symbol is like this and there are some reversible uh, uh, if, if, if the pump and the motor are, are reversible that is they can rotate in rotate in both directions then this is the symbol. Oh sorry. There are various kinds of pumps which are used we are going to look at three typical types of pumps. So, we will first look at the piston pump or the motor in in both cases the construction is quite similar only thing is that in the pump the, the, the motion will be created by the prime mover and the fluid will be delivered while on the motor the fluid will be will come into the motor and the and the motion will be delivered. So, this is the only difference that is why we have we are showing them in a uniform manner. So, the first thing is the piston the actual piston pump which operates like this. So, you see that you can you, you can imagine that there are a let me let, let me let me show you let me try to show you that along the periphery of the motor along the periphery there are a number of such pistons. So, you can if you if you, if you take a cross section you can see this diagram right. So, there are this is one piston. So, along the periphery this is one piston the here it there is another piston here there is another piston. So, along the periphery there are a number of pistons two of them are being shown right. And these pistons at the end is actually connected by a plate. So, you see the plate in the figure. So, see the plate in the figure. Now, you see that the plate is now you should see the plate, the plate is connected at an angle theta. What does it mean? That let us let us take the case of the pump. So, the pump is being rotated in this way by prime mover, right. So, one now what do you while it is rotating you can imagine that this is while it is while the disc is rotating here it is pushing and here it is pulling the piston right. So, what is happening is that here the fluid is being sucked in from the reservoir 
and here the fluid is getting delivered into the outlet. So, because of this angle the fluid is getting sucked here and then it is getting delivered into this outlet. So, so this, this is called a swash plate, this is called a swash plate and this delivers pressurized fluid at this outlet. On the other hand, if you apply pressured fluid here and then, then the fluid will come out through this outlet and this swash plate will actually rotate in this direction. So, that is the function of the motor. So, this is the way piston pumps move and naturally the flow rate that you can deliver depends on the number of number of cycles of the what is what is the total flow rate that depends on the number of pistons and the and the number of uh, so at during one rotation each piston will will deliver a fluid which is equal to its own volume so therefore if the number of rotations per second is x then x into that number of volume will actually get delivered in that pressure so this you can using this you can deliver, uh, compute the volume flow rate, we are not computing anything, we, our objective is to understand only the operation. On the other hand, look at gear pumps, in the gear pumps you have meshed gears, so what is happening, you can, you can imagine that as these gears are rotating, oh. so as these gears are rotating in this zone, as this, you see this, this teeth is moving this way and this teeth is moving this way. So, here it, they are compressing the fluid and some high pressure region is created. On the other hand, here the meshed teeth, the, I mean the actual drawing is not, actually there has to be much closer meshing of the teeth. So, here the, these, these teeth are, are actually going away, so they are opening up. In one place they are closing, they are like this, like this. So, in one place they are closing, so when they are closing they are they are they have a tendency of creating a pressure. On the other plate they are they are actually opening, so when they are opening here you have a low pressure region. So, obviously this low pressure region will suck in fluid from the inlet and this high pressure region will actually drive the fluid at the outlet. So, this is the way the gear pump works. So, on the other hand if you if you in the case of the motor again if you apply pressure here and if you uh, what will happen is that then it will rotate in the other direction. So, it will move in the other direction this will get forced out, forced and then it will it will open in the other direction and it will go, go out. So, this is you see these two these axial piston pumps in, in hydraulics we need to have the rotational speed and the fluidic rates are I mean very proportional in the sense that every time if an axial piston pump or a gear pump rotates at a at a certain rate then irrespective of the pressure a certain volume of fluid will get delivered per second right. So, the flow rate is directly proportional to the uh, rotational rate of the shaft. In this is the third kind of pump which is called a vein pump. Here what is happening is that you see that this is the outer casing. This is the port through which fluid is going out and this is the port through which fluid is being sucked in, these are the ports. So, you can understand and these are, these are the veins, these are the veins which are spring loaded actually this is not shown. So, this actually is pressed against the casing, here there is a spring pressed against casing. So, what is happening you can again see here that here as it is moving the vein is always pressed against the casing. So, it is actually trying to take the fluid along the casing. So, this much of fluid is being pushed, so it sort of scrapes the fluid and takes it here and as it comes here it is getting that is getting compressed, so it gets delivered. Similarly, 
So, th that is why here the fluid goes out and here it gets collected. Similarly, here it gets collected and here it goes out. So, you see that in fact, now you can now you can collect you can actually connect these outlets together and make a make one outlet and similarly you can have one inlet. So, you can have one inlet. So, then the fluid will get go this way and from here it will go this way and I mean uh, rather finally it will go. So, here you will get the overall outlet and here is the overall inlet. So, this is the way a vane pump works very simply speaking. So, having seen these three kinds of pumps, we would <coughs> take a look at now we will take a look at now this we have seen that how the fluid is pressurized and pressurized fluid is generated. We have also seen the motor which where the pressurized fluid can be can create a rotational motion. We will see another kind of actuator where it creates linear motion. We basically need these, these two kind of things. Sometimes we can transfer I mean we can convert rotational motion into linear motion using you know things like lead screws, but we can also create direct linear motion using what are known as cylinders. Now, in between these two that is where the between the pump and the actuator which can be a motor or which can be a cylinder the fluid has to pass and there are it has to pass in various ways pressure has to be controlled. So, various types of components have to be put in it in the path of its journey from the pump to the actuator. So, we need various kinds of typically we need various kinds of valves for this and one of the major category of valves is are called directional valves whose job it is to control the direction of the flow. So, which way it will move? Will it move from the uh, that is the flow flow direction because the because the flow direction is very much related to the direction of motion. Now, we want to create motion in in various ways sometimes we want to create back and forth motion. So, if you want to create back and forth motion then we have to continuously change the change the direction of flow automatically. So, for using doing these valves are required. So, we have various kinds of directional valves we are going to look at these three. So, the first one is a one way check valve the second one is a two way valve and the third one is called a four way valve. So, first the check valve. So, the check valve what does it do? It will allow flow in one direction, but not the other direction and it is. So, you see how it works very simple this is a this is this, this is one of the constructions there are various kinds of check valves. In fact, the mechanical design of hydraulic systems are very complicated they require very precision manufacturing and uh, so there are various constructions possible, but we are going to see mainly schematics. So, this is one schematic where we use a ball type check valve we can also use a poppet type check valve various kinds. So, here what is happening is that this is a spring this is a spring and this is a ball this is actually a ball solid ball may be hollow also. So, what is happening is that if you if the flow is in this direction then the ball will be pushed along the spring and it will be the water the fluid will flow through the like this through the spring, but when it will be when the flow will be in this direction then the ball will be pushed in this direction and it will come and settle and close this pore this port. So, fluid cannot flow from this direction to this way while it can flow freely through this. So, this is a symbol which shows that the flow direction is this and this way it cannot pass. Having seen one way check for sometimes we need valves you know we will we will we will demonstrate a case of a of you know pilot operated valves because sometimes we also want that in the normal condition it flow will be in this direction, but under certain special conditions the flow can be made in the reverse direction also. So, how do we ensure that? So, sometimes we because remember that these all these hydraulic equipment can actually be quite far away from the operators where, where the operator is working. They can be you know near the machine etcetera. 
So, there are needs by which the operator from a from a relatively remote action it can operate it can change the uh, mode of working of the valve. So, for this reason pilot operated valves are used whereby applying an, an, an external pressure possibly from a remote source one can change the mode of operation of the valve. So, let us give an example. So, here you have a valve you can see that the this is the port and this is a this is a my you know the member which controls the flow. This is a spring and this is a cylinder which separates these two. This is my pilot port and this is a drain port. You know in these valves remember that suppose a pump is trying to deliver fluid through a load and the load is moving. Now, suppose suddenly the load gets mechanically jammed then what is going to happen the, the pump is trying to drive fluid and the load is not moving. So, the fluid will immediately tend to get pressurized because it is because it is incompressible very high pressure will generate and these very high pressures can actually be very detrimental they can open they can damage seals fittings they can create explosions etcetera. So, therefore, pressure has also always to be in all this equipment if the pressure suddenly tends to be very high because it is in because it is incompressible. So, the pressure can very quickly rise to high values sometimes if there is jamming. So, therefore, there are always mechanisms such that such pressures can be has to be released. So, here is a so they are this is the that mechanism drain. So, now what is happening is that initially so this is also a the part and this is the port this is this is uh, the ok. So, initially normally what is happening is that this, this spring is pressing. So, this is so this port is these are actually solid parts these are not if you need to, this is the hollow part where, where the fluid exists these are solid parts metallic parts. So, normally what is happening is that this is the position of the <coughs> valve uh, what is that called stem and the. So, now when the fluid is coming here the fluid is pushing and and this will come down if, if there is certain amount of pressure. So, there will be certain amount of force on this and this spring force will be overcome and the fluid will flow out through this. This, this is the normal flow direction. On the other hand if the if the pressure becomes too much here then it may happen that the force is also here. So, the force on the so the now because of the spring force. So, if you see free body diagram the spring force is here and the pressure forces are here also also on these. So, now if sometimes it may happen that the pressure here may move the spring up in which case this will be this will open this will suppose the fluid may pass out from in this way through the drain. In other cases now suppose you apply a suppose you apply a pilot pressure then what will happen now that will come later. So, we can see that if we apply fluid flow here the fluid will freely pass and in this direction now now what happens but it cannot pass in the other direction. Why it cannot pass in the other direction? Because if let me let me change the color to mark the other direction. So, if the if the fluid now starts to tries to enter this port here then this is going to get pressed and this will close this will close. So, fluid cannot pass in this direction that is why it is a check valve. On the other hand if we, if we in, in certain conditions we want that under certain we want to convert this valve from a from we also want reverse flow. So, in that case we can apply pilot pressure here if you apply pilot pressure then this whole thing by pilot pressure will come down. So, the so this thing now that that I think we have a diagram we have a separate diagram for the pilot pressure. So, we will show that. So, when we have pilot pressure 
then this is the pilot port. So, you have pressure. So, this spring will be pressed and this will actually come out at the bottom, not exactly aligned, maybe somewhere over here. So, now the fluid, now this opening is opened, these, these openings are open. So, the fluid will pass and can flow through these. They can also, if it opens, they can also get drained. Okay. So, so you see, so, so, so this is a typical pilot operated check valve. Similarly, there are situations where we need to change flow direction. So, typically we have two way and four way valves and we must see, so these are this T means tank, this P means pump and this A or B are the load, the load ports, load or system ports. So, now you see that this valve has two positions. Okay. So, if in this in this position, you see that the pump is actually connected to the port A. How it is going to come back to the tank is not through this, but through some other path, which is not shown. So, you see that we, we draw it, there are two, two positions. So, we draw it by two boxes. Sometimes we may have three boxes in which there is a central position neutral. On one side we have pump and tank, on another side we have the load ports and this arrow indicates that in which in each of these positions which port is connected to which port. So, in this position pump is connected to B, in, the, in this particular position actually this should have been A if you, if you correspond to this and this should have been Actually, so this means that this diagram actually corresponds to this particular box, where this is P, this is A and this is tank is sealed. So, the tank is sealed and B is also sealed. So, these are sealed as you can see. On the other hand, in the next position, see just, just the reverse. So, just the reverse. That is now it is in the right position. So, in the right position pump is connected to B and A and tank are sealed. So, you have the other box of that diagram. So, you see that a particular what, what have you achieved? That by moving the spool, just by moving the spool of the valve, you can connect either port A to pump or port B to pump. This is what you have achieved. And how do you move the spool? There are a variety of ways to move the spool. So, for example, the spool may be moved sometimes, you know, when we draw the symbol, suppose we draw this symbol, then how do we move the spool? We, we may be moving the spool by a solenoid. Okay. So, we may be moving, if we write, write like this, we, we, this is a solenoid symbol. Sometimes, we may be using, if, there are, if these valves are big, it requires force to move the spool. So, the spool may be moved by either a, so this triangle means they are moved by hydraulics and pneumatics. If this is filled up, this is a hydraulically moved spool. So, the sometimes this directional valves can be very large and to move the spool itself, you need another hydraulic force. So, this is a hydraulically moved spool, triangle filled. If the triangle is hollow, then it is a pneumatically filled, pneumatically operated valve. Sometimes, uh, so these are very uh, typical situation. Sometimes, we may have an, we may have, this means that there is a spring. So, you only need to pull it in this direction, then return is by spring. Sometimes we may have an adjustable spring. So, there are all kinds of spool moving actuation mechanisms are there with this valve. You, you may also like to move it mechanically just by hand or by pushing something, draw, pulling a lever. 
So, coming to uh, then we come to four way valves. So, in four way valves it is exactly similar only thing is that now in each position both A and B are connected to pump and tank. So, in this position pump is connected to B, tank is connected to A while in this position pump is connected to A and tank is connected to B is connected to tank. So, how, so you see that now by construction this is this is exactly similar. So, the same valve is becoming two way or four way basically depending on the geometry the how wide is this it is the same type of figure only thing is that previously we had this one as very wide. So, therefore, A was sealed. Now, we have this one as, as a narrow one. So, in this position pump is connected to B and tank is connected to A while on the if you move it to the left then pump is connected to A and tank is connected to B. So, this is a four way valve. Now, as, as I said that you in many cases you need to control the pressure or the flow through the valve. Sometimes you know velocity has to be controlled if you are moving a very high load you sometimes want that it moves at only at a certain speed. So, for that you have to do flow control if you want to and, and pressure control is very much needed. So, we have another the, the other kinds of valves which are called pressure relief valves and flow control valves. So, we will look at some of them. So, this is a simple pressure release valve. So, you see that this is the inlet, this is the inlet. So, very simple this is the drain right. So, actually this valve can be connected across a pipeline. So, if you connect it across a pipeline this is your drain. So, if the pressure here increases too much then this this particular poppet this will push push this will be pushed up and therefore, the fluid will pass through the drain. So, since the drain is at a low pressure immediately pressure will fall. So, high pressure cannot be created and at what pressure this this poppet will start moving and will open the line to the drain that depends on the spring and this and this pressure can be adjusted by tightening this screw. So, if you tighten the screw the, the spring can be preloaded to a value and then at that adjustable adjusted value if the pressure goes beyond that then the fluid will be connected to drain. So, this is this is shown by this symbol that this is the relief direction and th this shows that there is an adjustable spring here. So, this is a very simple pressure relief valve. Then we have a pilot operated relief valve see. So, that is more complex. So, what here what we are doing is that very this this operation is interesting. So, initially what happens is that by this spring action you see here there is actually a small orifice which is not drawn in the diagram the person who drew it missed it. So, normally because the fluid pressure here for steady pressure and the fluid pressure here are same. So, therefore, this is being pressed by this spring and this is actually closed this comes and sits on this. So, the fluid is passing like this. Now, if there is a sudden suddenly very suddenly pressure rises then what will happen is that because this is narrow orifice. So, the so, so the pressure here and here will not be same. So, suddenly if the pressure rises high here this will be pushed up by that force and naturally this opening will be opened and fluid will drain to tank this is tank. So, therefore, sudden pressure rises can be controlled. Second thing is that if that if now the pressure suppose the pressure rises slowly then that phenomenon will not occur, but then at a certain value suppose this is sealed for example, in this position it is connected to tank but in this position suppose this is a this valve is in this position therefore, uh, this is connected to 
the pump. So, this is the pump port. So, therefore, when it will be in this position, this then this is connected to some pressure point. So, suppose we or we might have sealed it. So, then what happens is that as this pressure rises, this pressure will also keep rising and they will balance each other. At a certain point of time, the pressure here will be too much for this needle valve to resist. So, the needle valve will open and then the fluid, this is actually a hollow, see the dotted lines. So, there is a hollow opening through this. So, then this fluid will flow through this, through this and will go out to the tank. So, even steady very high pressures cannot be sustained. So, lastly we have a <coughs> uh, we have a flow control valve. Now, what is happening here is that the here we want to we want to control flow. So, you see Okay, what we will do is we are actually running out of time. So, we will consider the flow control valve in the next lecture. So, in the next, next lesson we will actually begin with the flow control valve. So, I will skip this for the time being. This is cylinder. So, we can talk about the cylinder later. So, this is from the last 3 4 slides we will take up in the next lecture. So, now, now let us come to the lesson review. So, what have we done today? So, we have today we have seen the basic hydraulic system principles that some uh, pressures, pressured fluid is created using a pump and that fluid flows through the that pressure is transmitted by taking the fluid through lines and is applied on the load to create various kinds of motion and we see that it is it is possible to amplify force but at the same time energy is conserved so therefore the velocity that we are we can uh, create gets limited by the flow rate that can be delivered by the pump at that pressure we have also seen that for making an effective system we need to have various kinds of components we need the fluid we need the lines we need the ceilings we, of course we need pumps and uh, the actuators the motor we also need to control the flows flow of the fluid we need various kinds of valves and among the valves there are some valves which control the direction of flow there are some valves which control the pressure and the flow so we will continue with this we have seen pumps and motors and we have seen part of the valves some bits are left and finally we will see the cylinders in the next lecture so you may ponder what are the main advantages of hydraulics over electric systems. There are some advantages I have already told. The major advantage of hydraulic systems is that they can handle much more power at using much more low sizes. Therefore, they are of prime importance and then used in aerospace. We will discuss this in the next lesson. We have identified you can identify the major components of a hydraulic system if you want to build one and three major types of pumps we have discussed it and uh, what are the different ways in which a directional valve may be operated. So, there are various types of directional valves one way, two way, four way. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much. We will continue with this in the next lesson. Welcome to lesson 27 of industrial automation and control. In this lecture, we will first look, look at pressure and flow control valves, something which spilled over from the last lecture. Then look at hydraulic cylinders, proportional valves and servo valves. And finally, we will look at uh, the structure of a full you know hydraulic actuation system. So, we look at the instruction objectives, describe the principles of operation of pressure and flow control valves and cylinders, basic components of proportional valves, 
learn about basic components of servo valves and be familiar with the typical you know control architecture of uh, hydraulic actuation systems. This, these are the instructional objectives of this lesson. <coughs> this shows that this, this shows this is a slight little analysis of that feedback arrangement that is if the suppose you have this is this is a this is a valve and this is an actuator and there is a there is a connecting link so you give an input motion here what will happen this will initially shift this way the moment this shift this way what happens is that the pump connects to this and the tank connects to this so the actuator moves this way when the actuator moves this way the w moves this way and that will tend to keep it put it up so it so the cause that was created the effect will nullify the cause that's why it's a negative feedback situation and it's stable so if you want to analyze the motion of this z which finally creates the flow then you have to understand that then you have to look at it like this so you see that first when you you imagine that first there are there are actually two inputs and this is the motion that you want to analyze. So first of all, you, you apply superposition. So first of all, you apply, assume that W is 0 and X is applied. So then the, this rod is going to move about this because, because W is 0, so I have so pivoted to this. That will create some motion. Next, you imagine that X is fixed and W is moving. So now, now you imagine that it is moving like this about X. So this is so if you can for small motions you can imagine that that these two motions are the motions which will be created and the net motion is going to be a resultant of that. So now you can understand. So if W is a fulcrum and if X is applied, if an amount X is applied, then what is going to be the motion here, right? So that's going to be uh, that's going to be B by A plus B into X. On the other hand, if you apply, fi fix it here and apply a motion y here, this is y, then what is going to be the motion here? It is going to be A by B into W, suppose W is the motion here. So finally, you get, so for what is the final motion Z? 